Hi, my name is Drew Tiagi, and in this video, I'll be going over the chicken McNugget theorem, which is a neat little theorem in the field of number theory, which is basically a field of mathematics concerning whole numbers and countable numbers and their relationships. So, the chicken McNugget theorem is actually a theorem that's derived from the Forbinius coin problem, which, if you don't know Forbinius, he's a German mathematician who had this idea that he has a question that if we had these coins, so if imagine a place, with coins of let's say seven and six nominations, what's the highest number that we cannot make using the six and seven coins? This is Dallas's problem. And so what mathematicians developed was this solution called the chicken McNugget theorem. So I'll explain more into why the chicken McNugget theorem is called that way. It's an unusual name, but it actually means it actually has a relevant connection to the theorem. So sorry, what is the chicken McNugget theorem? The chicken McNugget theorem states that if M you have two numbers, if m and n are relatively prime, so relatively prime, what that means is that they don't have any factors other than one. So for example, eight and 15 are relatively prime to each other because if we consider the factors of eight, you have two, that's it, two, one, um, four, eight, right? 15, you got one, three, five, 15. And so looking at this list, these two don't share any factors together, and therefore we can consider these two numbers, eight and 15, to be relatively prime. And so given these two numbers, m and n, that are relatively prime, the largest number, that cannot be created as a combination, integer combination of m and m, so in other words, largest number that can't be written in the form of am plus bn, where a and b are just random constants. So that largest number uh, that cannot be written as a combination is mn minus m minus n. And that's the theorem. So basically what we're saying is if we have these two relatively prime integers, the largest number that can be created as a combination of mixing these uh, two integers is equal to mn minus m minus n. And so let's dive into the problem to see what this actually means. And so the problem where that started this theorem, that started the name of this theorem, is the chicken McNugget problem. And so the chicken McNugget problem says, so back in the 80s, chicken McNuggets were sold in boxes of six, nine, and 20. So we have chicken nuggets in boxes of six, nine, and 20. And so the problem states, what is the greatest number of chicken McNuggets we can buy such that you can't use these boxes to make that order? So for example, um, you know, you can't order three chicken McNuggets because it's too small and there's no boxes that satisfy that need. And so for this problem, this one, 6, 9, 20, we can't use the chicken McNugget theorem because we have th three integers and this one only deals with two integers, m and n. And so in this case, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is 43, but we can't use the chicken McNugget theorem in this case. And there is no formula for three numbers because it's a relative, the problem is NP hard, which basically means that there is no set formula or closed system solution such that it solves you know, the problem with three integers. So instead, just to demonstrate how this works, I'll just take this six box away and consider nine and 20. Okay, so not, let's say that chicken McNuggets are only sold in boxes of 9 and 20. So now, what's the largest denomination we can order such that you can't satisfy this order based on these boxes? So 9 and 20 are relatively prime because we consider factors of 9, 1, 3, 9. Consider factors of this, we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. And so they don't match, so they're relatively prime. And so now, all we do is plug it into the formula. So consider this m, consider this n. So m times n, so 9 times 20 is 180, minus m is 9, minus n is 20. And so 180 minus 9 minus 20, that's 151. Uh, and so the largest number of chicken nug McNuggets we can not buy using 9 and 20 boxes is 151. And so you might be saying, really, 151 is that's the largest number? And yeah, that is the largest number because we can consider, okay, how would we make 152 boxes? And so for 152, you can imagine... We could do eight boxes of nine, so 72. And then once we had 72, we could do five boxes of 20, and that would give us, uh, sorry, four boxes of 20, 72 plus 80, right? So four boxes of 20, that's good as 152. 
153, that's actually a factor of 9. So we can just do 17 boxes of 9, and we get 153. 150, we could do uh, 10 boxes of 9. And then we get three boxes of 20, so 90 plus 20, that's 90 plus 60, that's 150. And so 151 is the largest number such that we can't fulfill this order based on sizes 9 and 20. And so that's basically what the chicken magnetic theorem does, and that's where it comes from. It comes from this problem concerning chicken magnetics. So now let's go over a harder problem that's actually from the AMC, which is the American Math Competition. And so this problem is problem 23 from the AMC 12B, number 16. And so basically, just to summarize the problem, the problem states that in coin land, coins have values of 6, 10, and 15. So these coins have values of 6, 10, and 15. And then you're supposing that X is the value of the most expensive item that cannot be bought using these coin values. So X is the most expensive item. Okay, and then you're asked, the question asks you, what is the sum of the digits of x? Okay, so once you find the sum of the most expensive item you cannot buy using these coin denominations. And so at first you might be thinking, dear, yeah, we can't solve this problem. We have three numbers, and the chicken McNugget theorem only deals with two numbers. And I said, well, I'll say you're right. There is something we can do in this case that makes it easier to solve than just trying to guess you know, each number. What we can do is we can say, okay, we'll look at these numbers 6 and 10. I know they're not relatively prime because they both are even, therefore they share a factor of 2. Right? 6 and 10 both share a factor of 2. So what if I took out that 2? So if I took out that 2, what I get is I get 3 and I get 5. And so now here I can apply the theorem, the chicken McNugget theorem, to find the largest number between 3 and 5 that can't be made. And so using the chicken McNugget theorem, we do 3 times 5, 15 minus 3, minus 5, and we get 7. So 7 is the largest number we can't make using 3 and 5. And so if I double this, so multiply by 2, you get 14. 14 is the largest number, largest even number, right? Because we can't make any not odd numbers with 6 and 10, because when you add an even number, when you add an even plus an even, you get an even as a result. So we can't make any odd numbers, but the highest even number we can't make using 6 and 10 is 14. Okay, so this is kind of strategy. If you ever need to do this on two numbers that aren't relatively prime, you can make them relatively prime by factoring out a number like so. So 14, so that means using six and 10, we can make all the even numbers, 14, we can make 16, six plus 10, we can make 18, six times three, we can make 20, two tens. So we can make all those even numbers infinitely forever. But now we have 15, right? So we have an extra number, we have 15. And so now we can start making odd numbers. And so because 16, so 14 we can't make, right? Because 16 is the smallest number we can make, we can consider that if we add 15, 31. So now we can make 31. If we add 15, we can make 33. If we add 15, we can make 35. And so now we can make every odd number beyond 31. And because we're making every even number beyond 16, we fill in the gaps here. So we can make 30 because of the first row. We can make uh, 32. We can make 34. And so now you can see we can make every number, every number, single number, even and odd, after 30 because you're adding 15 to the smallest number, 16. So that's what it says, right? But the issue is we can make odd numbers before 31 because we can only add 15. And so therefore, the smallest number has to be 29, right? Because we can make 28, we can make even numbers above 16, but we can only make odd numbers above 31. And so the smallest number has to be 29. And if you just want to check it, right, we can check it by saying, okay, if we're making 29, we have to have an odd number making it because you can only make an odd by adding it to an even. You can't make an, e an odd number by adding two evens. And so 29 minus 15, that leaves us with 14, right? And we just said you can't make 14 out of with 6 and 10. If you think about it, there really is no way you can make 14 with 6 and 10. And therefore, the greatest number is 29. So x is 29, the sum of its digits, 2 plus 9, is 11. And therefore, the answer is 11. And so in this case, even though we couldn't directly use the chicken McNugget theorem, by looking at the problem more carefully and by breaking it down and taking out the factors and stuff like that, we could actually use logic and we could use critical thinking 
to discern the answer and find the answer to be 11. And that's the chicken nugget theorem. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you find this interesting. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.